Today's episode is presented by Lodestar, the fee experts. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Lending Leaders. My name is Elena Gardner, and this week we have a very special episode. Um, I actually have one of our te- my team members, uh, Tim Austin. He is our marketing content manager, and he writes Tale of Two Mortgages, which is celebrating its 100th episode this week. So thank you so much, Tim, for joining me. And we're going to talk a little bit about the process behind Tale of Two Mortgages this week. Delighted to be on the show. Can't wait to talk about it. Yeah. So uh, first of all, I have to acknowledge Tim is the one who normally episodes ep- edits all of our episodes. Um, so all the subtitles, all of the improvements you've seen over the last year, that's all been Tim. So thank you, Tim, for being such a huge part of the show behind the scenes. And now we get to bring you in front of them. <laughs> My pleasure. And if anything goes wrong, you know, it'll be it'll be taken care of. <laughs> Perfect. Well, obviously, I was there for the, you know, in, inception of Tale of Two Mortgages, you know, but you know, I, I like to go back and kind of talk about what you were thinking when you originally pitched this idea to Jim and I of this comic strip. What was I thinking? That's that's a really interesting way to kind of frame the inception of the idea because mm-hmm. I wasn't really thinking anything. <laughs> um, you know, Lodestar is really good about putting its technical people and its creative people in the same room on a regular basis so we can keep mm-hmm. ideas fresh and keep things you know, working well. And so during one of those sessions, um, somebody pitched, I think what was supposed to be an infographic it mm-hmm. was, you know, a tale of two mortgages it was an idea thrown out. The idea being that we would kind of compare the mortgage origination process with a competent tech stack on the one hand and with, you know, your Rolodex and waiting on hold with a title agent on the other hand. And, mm-hmm. um, I think, I think it was me that said, you know, a couple weeks into the development of that, to whomever made the draft, this is great. No one will read this. And that's the thing with content marketing in the mortgage industry. You're, you know, you're marketing to busy people, loan originators, ops people, title agents, they're busy. Um, Market cycles can make them especially busy and a little more stressed sometimes. And so providing them with something that's valuable to them is, you know, a core value. And so with an infographic, however good of a job we did, it would be just one among many pieces of content marketing. And I was sort of just spitballing and I said, I don't know, what about like a cartoon or something? What are people looking at on their phones in between tasks? What are people doing on their lunch break? Uh They're scrolling on Instagram, right? Short form content. And I think it was in that moment, we all sort of simultaneously had the light bulbs go off where it's like short form content. That's not something Mm -hmm. that Lodestar was currently providing. You know, this podcast is an example of long form content. Um, but we didn't have anything that was 30 seconds at a glance. And from there, it just sort of the idea of a tale of two mortgages. What if we showed what the struggle is like? What if we showed not what is the information, you know, the the process of originating on the one hand with, with competent tech on the other hand without, but why don't we show how it feels to be mm-hmm. stuck without the right thing? How, why don't we show how it feels when you can just use Ron or when you can have an e-closing or something, any number of innovations and you can... What does that feel like for the lender and the home buyer? And, you know, we decided to represent that with cartoon characters in mm-hmm. what was originally a, a video and then a strip. And then it just kind of became, yeah, chasing the idea down to show what it feels like. Yeah. And I think, you know, as we've kind of prepared for this and and looked at, you know, everything, I, I found some of our early iterations and it really was originally more of a, it was eight panels. It was this big thing, right. Yeah. Of like, we're going to tell this sto- specific story. Right. Mm-hmm. And now it's kind of become this, you know, we, uh, syndicate it through progress and lending. So if you remember, if you subscribe to progress and lending, you get our, our comic strip every day. Um, you know, and it's become a little bit more fun and playful. How I think that's one of the toughest things has kind of been, I think, keeping it light and fresh, especially in this market. What would you say like your biggest struggle with that has been? Um, my biggest struggle has also been, I think, my greatest pleasure in the strip, which is learning. Um, I'm not a native to the mortgage industry. Mm-hmm. I come from from academia and editing. Uh, so while content making and writing things and you know doodling on napkins is more natural to me, understanding the lending, um, the loan officer experience, and just the kind of lending process, the whole mortgage origination thing, that was, you know, I had a learning curve starting out. 
And this strip has really allowed me to to chase that down and learn a whole lot more. But I think trying to relate to the experience of people on the ground, you know, who you can read all you want about what rates are, what they were 20 years ago, where people think they're going, but there's really nothing like talking to people whose livelihoods re rely on closing that deal, right? Whose reputations are staked on making sure that they are interfacing with borrowers, especially first time home buyers uh, in a way that's competitive and dynamic. And so that's been a, a big challenge is just making sure that in something that's silly, right, that's a cartoon about, we went with sea creatures even, so mm -hmm. we could make underwater puns and everything, making sure that that stays true to what we hear from our clients and from friends in the industry about what is the lending experience. Yeah. And I think going back, I'm just going to hop back a little bit so we can dive into the marketing aspect of it, right? Um, and I think that was something, you know, when when we first kind of con came up with the idea and said, oh, this is something we're going to do repeatedly. Obviously, one thing to keep in mind is like costs of producing something like this. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about like the workflow and how much time it takes you on a weekly basis to create this comic strip? I would, I would love to, because that's one this of the lovely things, ROI well, piece, right? Yes. And I'm, I'm still kind of um bemused by what we came up with which is something that's very cheap um and when you have content creation when you as an organization want to invest in that there is implied attention between creators and the people that are funding them and it's almost like a tug of war you know where you have the creators on the one hand trying to finish the project quickly whether it's hourly or it's a full job and you have the people buying it who want to provide that content and get a good price on it and there's a bit of a attention there. So what we came up with was doing it in-house um, and then drawing uh, a comic strip every single week, an original comic strip that I write and draw and doing that on an iPad using Procreate, which a lot of people who draw on tablets are very familiar with. And we used a couple tricks to to do that. Um, we I use like a slight line correction so that I can draw the shapes consistently and quickly and then do various iterations and poses and we render that out um, of the program as a vector graphic and then upload it into Adobe Illustrator so we can use our brand hex code colors um, underneath of the black line work. And that allows us to very quickly vary things. You're not mixing paints, you're not, you're not using inks, you're not using paper. So it's very cheap, it's very eco-friendly, and it's very customizable in a short amount of time using very basic tools that we already had anyway for other things that we were building and designing for Lodestar. So on a good week, it takes about an hour and a half from, all right, let's sit down and do this to what do you think if the comic is done? Um, which is not a whole lot of time for an original comic strip. It's, it's remarkably fast and easy. Um, and it was really fun to kind of design that process, mostly to get mm -hmm. the pitch screen lit. Can I do this? <laughs> Will you pay for this? But also to kind of, you know, have a challenge of how quickly, how efficiently can we do this mm -hmm. and provide something that's unique. Yeah. And I think that's so important is in marketing, it's very much, you know, creating content, it takes time. And I think it's something that a lot of people don't realize how much time it, that can go into a mm -hmm. branded graphic for your yes. social media, right? Like, um, we're working on something for our new brand Saddlewise that we got to develop. So we'll, you'll be hearing more and more about that. Um, but you know, we, we probably have spent at least two to three hours trying to create the proper template to make sure it looks good and it will perform well. And yeah. all of the analytics pieces, um, if you're not in marketing, you don't, might not realize how long graphic work can take. Um, and I think that's yeah, really it's, important it's to highlight as well. Yeah, the, the the editorial process, especially in, I think, a company like ours, where we value collaboration so much, you know, making sure everybody has seen it and everybody who is using it or publishing it mm -hmm. has a hand in it. It's so much back and forth. And if you do that back and forth process with somebody who's not on your team or who's hourly is reliant on, you know, doing the job at a certain rate, it's just it really is a slow process, like magnificently slow. And some people don't realize that you'll see this most in like web design but um mm -hmm. yeah so that's something we, we we really dodged a bullet there yeah and i think too um it's always something from from my perspective it's always something fun to talk to people about on the road 
Um, we've gotten, believe it or not, if you made it this far, we have gotten a couple leads from the comic strip, which is wild. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you never expect to work, but you're like, well, let's try it anyways. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, as we kind of wrap up here with the last year, um, or a hundred episodes or so, what has been your, your favorite part of creating Tale of Two Mortgages? Uh, you touched on it. Um when you mentioned that we've gotten some leads from this and it's, I think it's meeting people um, because you're talking about what it feels to, what it feels like to be in the trenches and they're trenches that I'm not in. I'm not a mortgage lender. Um, mm -hmm. So getting to go to some conferences with the Lodestar team and be on the floor and maybe I'm not quite as valuable as a salesperson, you know, compared to somebody who really knows our closing cost calculator and everything, but I still have had the pleasure of talking to so many people. They've taught me a lot. It's funny hearing, you know, the, um, the stories behind the keynote, right? The stories behind mm -hmm. the market trend. And that's been a bit of a guiding light for me, just trying to keep that story going and keep people smiling mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, where else in mortgage news are you going to uh, find yourself smiling? Um, we need something in our industry to keep it light <laughs> and to keep us, mm -hmm. um, to keep it human, which is the irony of doing sea creatures, you know? And as we wrap up here today, you, you get my favorite question, which I know you know it because you write it every week, <laughs> um, is at Lodestar, we are a guiding light in the night sky. That is what a Lodestar is. Uh, Tim, what is your Lodestar? I feel like I'm obligated now to say my Lodestar is jumping the gun on the question. Um, no, I... I um... My low star is definitely my family. I have two kids. I have uh, a wife I've been with for, for 10 years and I just love coming home and hanging out with them. They're really good people and uh, it's, it's fun. They keep things simple. They, they tell you when your ideas are really bad. I recommend any creative person um, get in contact with a four-year-old. Um, <laughs> your sense of your own genius will diminish if it was intact in the first place. So, yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, Tim, for joining me. Um, and if you want to find Tim, I actually know all the answers of where you can find him. <laughs> um, you can find him on LinkedIn as well as his email is taustin at LS Software Solutions. If you have any ideas for comic strips or stories you want us to share and anonymize, please tell us them. Um, I think that's one of our favorite things is getting those stories in and getting to, to recreate them in sea creature fashion. 100%. Um, so thank you all so much for watching and we'll be back, uh, next week with one more interview. Um, and then I'll, we'll have our season close out with myself, uh, and Jim and potentially Dave. So uh, if you have any questions for the three of us, um, as we close out about Lodestar or anything like that, please feel free to message me. Um, and thank you so much, Tim, for being willing to join me on camera today. My pleasure. Awesome. See y'all next week.